We thank you for the gift of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who promised to stay with us always until the end of the age. We awaken our mother at this presence in the most holy Eucharist. May our hearts burn within us as he opens the scriptures and brings the bread. Give us the eyes of faith to recognize his presence in our brothers and sisters, especially the face of the poor and the suffering. Nourished by the Holy Eucharist, send us forth to walk faithfully as missionaries and disciples, proclaiming the gospel to every heart and extending your green and your green. We ask this to Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us celebrate for this Mass. Father Lord. Please rise and join in singing our entrance hymn number 165 Christ the Lord is risen today. 165. ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will we praise you we bless you we adore you Adoption, 
we look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, and indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty wonders, deeds, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the thrones of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me, with him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh too will dwell in hope. Because you will not abandon my soul to the nether world, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried. And his tomb is still but our midst to this day. Since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Therefore my heart is glad and my 
soul rejoices, my body to abide in confidence, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father Him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourn, realizing that you were ransomed from your futile content, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. It was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believed in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them named Cleopas said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? He replied to them, what sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus in Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. Our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. Besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, 
and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. He said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As he approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it's nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. And they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the 11 and those with them who were saying, the Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. And the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise so, we're celebrating the third Sunday of Easter, but our Gospel, the timing of it is Easter Sunday. So, it's on Easter Sunday. The disciples are walking back to their hometown of Emmaus. And so Jesus appears to them as he did to Mary Magdalene at the tomb. And John and Peter uh, found the tomb empty. Uh, so he's appearing to various people at various times on Easter Sunday. And so I want to share with you what I use on Easter Sunday uh, to kind of sum up uh, the scriptures at this time of year. Him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but the witnesses chosen before by God, even to us who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets witness that, through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. So it's important that we recognize that we're getting hints and descriptions of who the resurrected Jesus is and what his body is like. So it's a glorified body, so it's different from the pre-resurrection physical body, but it's still a real physical body, but in its glorified state. So what does that mean? Well, it means he can still eat and drink food. He's visible and he's real. He has the wounds from the cross. Uh, we know that from his approach to St. Thomas. But he's also different. He can withhold recognition, such as Mary Magdalene thought he was the gardener. The disciples in the road to Emmaus did not recognize him until the breaking of the bread. He can enter locked rooms and disappear at will. And so these are the differences. But he still has to be real. And so they very clear in the scripture they use the word. He's not a ghost. He's not someone's figment of someone's imagination. He's the same Jesus who walked the earth, preached, suffered and died on the cross, and now is walking in his glorified state and appearing to various people as really the, the proof of the resurrection. So we're reminded that the empty tomb is just a start. It's not enough to prove the resurrection. There's other explanations, as we heard when the Pharisees bribed the guards who fell asleep at the tomb to say, tell people the body was stolen. And so we have to have these post-resurrection appearances that are really the, more the proof. And the other proof, to my mind, is that the Catholic Church, founded by the divine person Jesus Christ, is still here over 2,000 years later. And so I, uh, in, in my good fortune, I guess, um, one of our daily masses uh, had this road to Emmaus story already, so I was able just to grab my daily mass homily and now rehash it for you. But most of you don't know that unless you're at a daily mass, and if you don't, you probably don't remember what I said anyway. 
Cleopas and his unnamed companion were dejected as they made their way along the road to Emmaus. Their encounter with a stranger who reveals their fate and gives them hope to recognize him in the breaking of the bread. This illustrates for us what the Eucharist is really about. What a disappointment. They thought they'd found the Messiah, that he'd been trapped like an animal and executed as a criminal. Up until the very last breath, they had hoped he'd descend from the cross in stinking power and call the fire down upon the hypocrites. But all they heard from him were seven last words that were more like anguish whispers. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Pitiful, really, not to mention depressing. So that's how the disciples felt as they were going on the road to Emmaus. It was no ordinary grace before meal that the Lord had offered that evening in Emmaus. Compare the words used here to the words used at the Last Supper. He took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples. It was in the sacrament of his body and blood that they finally recognized him. And so he uses those same words that he used at the Last Supper, which if you remember on Holy Thursday, we were celebrating that's the institution of the Eucharist. And so this breaking of the bread is pointing to, if not is, the actual Eucharist. So it's pointing to the fact that, first of all, they recognize him in the breaking of the bread, but also he leaves himself to us in the Eucharist. Keep in mind this story was not written down till decades later by someone who had faithfully lived the Eucharistic life of the early church. He is teaching through this episode what the Eucharist clergy is really about. We often become distracted, rejected, beaten up by the world, and the Lord himself begins to speak to us through the scriptures, the inspired word of God. And then he talks about, as you know, how he is the fulfillment of the scriptures. And then this part uh, is, is subtitled, Easter People, Eucharistic People. One of my children once asked me why, if the Mass makes Calvary present again, we don't have a weekly Mass of obligation on Friday rather than Sunday. And that's a good question. It's because the Eucharist is always a celebration of the resurrection. That's why the full Eucharistic liturgy is forbidden on Good Friday and Holy Saturday. Sunday is the day he rose from the dead and is the risen Lord who stands among us in each and every Eucharist. And in his risen, glorified body that we receive when we take communion. To be an Easter people means to be a Eucharistic people. He did not just rise from the dead 2,000 years ago. He is risen and is still Emmanuel, God with us. Please stand for the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things physical and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, for the Father of all angels, God of God, the life of life, true God, true God, begotten of the name, of substantial to the Father, who in him all things remain, for us men of our salvation. Now in heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, and our Lord, and Lord, and Lord, Amen. For our Savior is the true Son of God, Jesus Christ. He suffered death and was buried. He rose with him on the third day, and of course, the scripture is, He has sent in heaven, and is seated at the right hand of Paul, who will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. In his kingdom, I have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, and the Lord, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. For the God of the sons of the Lord and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess my baptism and forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> Let's lift our hearts before our risen Lord and share with him our prayers. That the church may continue to be the standard bearer for love and compassion for all people in need. Let us pray to the Lord. That all leaders of state may be guided by the Almighty in the use just of power. Let us pray to the Lord. That all who suffer or grieve may find meaning through God's mercy and love. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord but all received into the church this Easter may continue to be led by the Lord on the path of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For people suffering from illness, may God bring them hope amid their suffering. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Let all who have died in Christ may rejoice forever with him in his glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, Pray in particular for the intention of this Mass, the happy repose of the soul of Vincent M. Piazza, Sr. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, amen. God of mercy, we trust in your love and seek your strength in all we do. We bring these prayers before you through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. amen. <clears throat> on singing our hymn for the preparation of the altar, number 509, we remember 509. happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let's give thanks to the Lord, the Lord our God. Right. Yes. right and just our duty and our salvation. At all times we'll thank you, O Lord, and this time above all, and now to you more gloriously when Christ our Passover hath been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful, for his death is our ransom from death and in his rise the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalting your praise, even the heavenly powers of the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
you're indeed holy, O Lord, and all your creator writing gives you praise. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the power and work of the Holy Spirit, you like all things and make you holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourselves after the rise of the sun to its setting, and to your sacrifice with your offer to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly employ you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration. They may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and to his command, we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. To give you thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which is given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, we celebrate the more of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as before to his second coming. We offer you with thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Lord, we pray upon the oblation of your church, recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. We make us an eternal offering to you so, so that we may obtain an inheritance of your life, especially from the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, the St. Isaac Jones, and all the saints, through whose constant intercession, your presence, we rely for unfailing help. In this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. And please confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Nelson our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you gain for your own. As you graciously prepares this family to assemble before you, in your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Part of departed brothers and sisters, all who are pleasing to you and who pass into this life, with kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Christ our Lord, who can bestow in the world all that is good. The world is in with him and in him, O God Almighty Father. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from distress, so we can less of hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, and your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins and the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace.
Please join in singing our communion hymn, number 335, Taste and See, 335.
the second collection next weekend will be for the prayer card. <laughs> Mother's Day mass cards are available at the rectory office. Please refer to the bulletin our website for other announcements. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant we pray that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer upon you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. May you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And bless Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. And go forth, the Mass is ending. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us from God. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God be you to be humbly and pray. Do thou, the praise of the heavenly hosts, for the power of God, cast and all Satan, and all the evil spirits, who are out of the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join in singing our recessional hymn. 177, Jesus is risen, 177.
Thank you. 